Hello everyone. Welcome to yet another session of our NPTEL on nonlinear and adaptive control. I am Srikant Sukumar from Systems and Control IIT Bombay. So we are pretty much at the end of week nine of our lectures, and we have hopefully done a pretty good job of uh, designing and analyzing algorithms that will drive autonomous systems such as the SpaceX satellite orbiting the Earth that we see in our background. So what we did last time was essentially the tuning function method for designing adaptive backstepping laws, right? So we essentially saw that having an ACLF for a system of the form 2.1 was uh, implied immediately that we could construct an ACLF for system of the form 2.2, which is essentially an added integrator layer, right? Now, uh, we of course had particular methods of doing that. Yeah, we, we essentially took the ACLF of system 2.1 and added to it a backstepping error term, right? We added to it a backstepping error term, right? And that was how we constructed a new control law, and a, of course, we got an adaptation law, and so on and so forth. Right now, of course, in order to be able to do, uh, do all this, we need to have an ACLF for the original system, also. And how one can come up with an ACLF for this system 2.1 again goes back to the same idea as adaptive integrator backstepping type methods. All right, so what I uh, want to do is to sort of do a slight modification of this as an example. If you remember, we had considered this particular example uh, for adaptive integrator backstepping and also extended matching. But I want to um, try to at least uh, use the ACLF based backstepping method on this problem. Now remember until now that for the ACLF uh, method in the ACLF backstepping method, the control was always assumed to be a real number. Uh, again, psi was also a real number because it had the same dimension as the control. Uh, but here, our control and this x2, which is a psi state, is in R3. Right? So we are still going to try to do this, try to use the uh, tuning function ACLF method, and hopefully it works. All right, let's give it a shot. So this is the beginning of lecture 9.6. We are getting a little bit adventurous here. We did the theory on scalar control or a single input system, but we are actually trying to uh, solve a multiple input or a uh, vector control problem. All right. So in this case, uh, we know that P is unknown. And omega is a known constant. Okay. Now, the first question is what is an ACLF for this system? So, the step one is find ACLF for this. Yeah. How do we do that? What exactly was an ACLF? An ACLF uh, essentially guaranteed that this system was adaptively asymptotically stabilizable now so what i would do is i would take motivation from how we solved the unmatched case uh, using the integrator backstepping method right? because in the integrator backstepping method we of course had an lyapunov candidate function right and that's what we'll try to use right? and that function was this v1 function and that was this v1 function okay because we had an x2 desired and of course we had you know whatever we had this which was this which is this alpha if you may in the tuning function setting and with that you can actually show that you know you have some nice properties all right uh, so what we propose is that 
are VA, right? Assuming again, I mean that, that everything is known. So P is known. So I'm going to call this VA x1 comma P is equal to one half. Uh, let's see, is this correct? Is this correct is the question. One half x one squared. Is that what we are saying here? Right, right, right. So we have to be careful to figure out what is going to be the appropriate ACLF. So one term is of course one half norm x one squared. This is one piece. Now will it have any dependence on theta? Is what I'm wondering. Right, so what we had done to begin with was right, right, and then in order to prove right, and then in order to prove that uh, we have you know adaptive asymptotic stabilization, we added to this v a theta tilde term, right, so now the the question that we have is if this term is in fact uh, this 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 v1 is in fact uh, aclf or not so let me just think about this a little bit carefully all right mm. yeah i believe this is fine so this v1 is an aclf this VA is an ACLF. Why do I say this? It is because um, if I take a VA dot that is del VA del X one times uh, F X one plus gamma sorry times P plus del v a del p times uh, gamma sorry gamma del v a del p transpose because that is the additional term so the modified system is gamma del v a del theta transpose so if i take this here plus whatever x2 is the control so I'm going to call it say u right then this term is equal to 0 because this term does not depend on uh, this va does not depend on theta at all or p at all uh, so here we will have x1 transpose times f x1 p plus u so if i choose u as minus f x1 p minus x1 or basically i will call this u equal to alpha so you're choosing alpha as this guy right so I'm going to choose this alpha as this guy apologize give me a second right if I choose my alpha as this guy then uh, I get uh, V a dot is equal to x1 transpose minus x1 transpose x1 which is negative definite for all p okay so done so this is in fact this v a is in fact an aclf that implies v a is an 
A C L F. Okay, so V A is an A C L F. All right. Uh, for the first state, right? So remember, I replace the first state with the control here. Okay, I replace the first state with the control here because that's how you would find an ACLF for the first system. Now, the question is, how do I find the ACLF for the second system? You know the method, right? Now, V1 is X1, X2, P, and this is simply uh, VA x1 p plus the backstepping error term right now in this case i cannot just do a square so i'll take a norm square so backstepping error is of course just z equal to x2 minus alpha right? which is x2 plus f x1 p plus x1 right so this is just the standard backstepping error term right and so now once i know that so this is just norm of z square so this is what is my uh, aclf for the new system so for corresponding to this how do i find the control just take the derivative right i mean so this is how we did it so v1 dot is basically va dot which is x1 transpose x1 dot right uh, so x1 transpose x1 dot is just uh, you know fx1 p plus x2 right and plus z transpose z dot which is basically x2 dot which is omega cross x2 plus u plus uh, del f del x1 so this is del f del x1 uh, this is going to be more complicated i think because fx1 is uh, is a matrix right? fx1 is a matrix uh, so this this has to be written in a nicer way this has to be written in a nicer way uh, but this is uh let's see this is a function of one state so i have to sort of write this in a smarter way uh, so i i think i'll not get into the detail that much for this i'm trying to wonder if i should get into the detail here uh, I will just call this del del x1 fx1 p plus x1 times x1 dot which is fx1 p plus x2 all right so that is what is the expression all right now what do I know about this guy is that it has x2 so i can write this as z plus alpha so this is x1 transpose z plus alpha which is z minus uh, so this is fx1 p uh, plus z minus uh, fx1 p minus x1 plus z transpose this whole quantity yeah again i'm writing this just as such right times x1 dot right i'm writing this just as the whole thing and this is basically just going to cancel out these quantities right and i'm going to left be left with minus norm x1 squared uh, plus z transpose so this guy will move here so sorry so this quantity will come inside this bracket so this is x1 plus omega cross x2 
plus u plus del del x1 fx1 pli plus x1 times this is just again fx1 p plus x2 right uh, and that's it so now my control will uh, u defined as alpha uh, I apologize as alpha 1 yeah of x1 x2 p will be minus x1 minus omega cross x2 uh, minus del del x1 fx1 p plus x1 times fx1 p plus x2 right and minus a nice negative term so this gives me v1 dot is minus norm x1 squared minus norm z squared which is negative definite and of course we have obtained our aclf so v1 is an aclf for the entire system for the x1 x2 dynamics yeah in the process what is our feedback is this guy all right the feedback law is this now there's a little bit of complication here okay in the sense that again this is because we have vector control and all that stuff um, if you look at this fx1 right so this fx1 if you remember was a matrix that is why I have to think carefully before taking a Jacobian of this right that's the whole point right uh, so I have to uh, because I have to take the partial of a matrix with respect to x1 so actually what you would have to do is you have to write this fx1 as a vector right and multiply it as such right so so essentially what would happen is that uh, I mean what I would have to do as a separate sort of uh, problem is write fx1 p as p1 f1 x1 plus this is a summation so p is in uh, say r well p is r3 okay so it's not so bad so plus p2 f2 x2 sorry f2 x1 plus p3 f3 x1 where f x1 is being written as three columns f x1 is being written as f1 x1 f2 x1 and f3 x1 basically the three columns okay the three columns and p1 p2 p3 are the three parameters right and now if i take a partial of this so uh, i'm sorry so del del x1 of f x1 p is going to be p1 del f1 del x1 plus p2 del f2 del x1 plus p3 del f3 del x1 all right so this is what it's going to be. okay so that is what is del del x1 of fx1 p and that's gets substituted inside here it's better that i keep it like this so basically my alpha uh, comes out to be alpha 1 comes out to be minus x1 minus omega cross x2 minus so the partial of x1 with respect to uh, x1 is essentially the identity matrix so i'll have identity plus p1 del f1 del x1 plus p2 del f2 del x1 plus p3 
del f3 del x1 and this is multiplied by fx1 p plus x2 and this is multiplied by fx1 p plus x2 okay so this is what you have for your feedback now uh, again one has to be a little bit careful here yeah one has to be a little bit careful here uh, and see if even this works out why I am wondering if this will work out is because now uh, this guy looks quadratic in your unknown right because there is an unknown here and there is an unknown here so somehow if I multiply this with that it looks like I will get a quadratic in my unknown right yeah 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 I will start to get a quadratic in my unknown and this might put me in a soup this not this might this will certainly put me in a soup or this will certainly put me in a soup so I think this sort of a setup uh, more complicated yeah and may not work yeah may not be able to figure out because see uh, uh, we always require linear parameterization right so now what is happening is that with this kind of a control law if I replace for the unknown case I replace the p with a p hat then there is a quadratic here in terms of the p right so yeah this may be more complicated um, but let me actually go back and look at the expression that's here if you look at how you move from alpha to uh, you know how the alpha 1 gets constructed here we can see clearly that alpha is a function of both x and theta right and so in this alpha 1 expression here you could have a dependence on theta here you could have a dependence on theta and uh, here you already have a theta so the idea is these two can also combine to give you a quadratic I guess this does not matter that therefore that the alpha 1 contains quadratic in theta this is not of our concern what will happen when we design the adaptive law is that we just replace the theta with a theta hat and we will still get a nice negative definite term in the uh, x and theta hat right so all we are doing is replacing the theta with the theta hat so I guess this is absolutely okay yeah this is going to be fine I will not say this is complicated this is okay this is the alpha 1 for whatever it is worth this is in fact the alpha 1 and we have our v dot like we desire which is an ACLF and now that we have an ACLF the expression for the tau is this guy right so I just have to compute this um, which is now uh, del V A del X so I'm going to actually try to copy this yeah great so I'm going to just copy this right so this is copied and so this is the expression that I'm trying to compute for the tuning function because I already so my uh, feedback is of course alpha 1 x1 x2 and a p hat so I replace p by p hat everywhere so if you want I can even reproduce that expression here uh, this is going to be yeah this whole mess yeah 
right and all I'm doing is adding the hats to these quantities right? this is my alpha 1 uh, x1 x2 p hat right right and this is going to be my tau right and so what is my tau my va was simply half uh, you know norm x1 square so del va uh, del x is basically uh, just x1 transpose minus z del alpha del x which is the first feedback so alpha was this guy so I will again have something like uh, uh, this expression so alpha was essentially this so partial of so alpha was essentially this guy with a, a negative sign so the partial of this is simply going to be this entire thing plus an identity with a negative sign so this is going to be uh, plus identity plus p1 del uh, f1 del x1 plus p2 del f2 del x1 plus p3 del f3 del x1 and this whole thing multiplied by f in our case what is f f is the what multiplies the unknown so that is just fx1 uh, multiplied by fx1 and the whole transpose of this guy so let me see if we are cons uh, consistent in the dimensions uh, so if we are consistent in the dimensions here so this is my control law right and this is my tau I'm just trying to verify if my uh, dimensions are correct so x1 transpose is a 3 by 1 by 3 vector z is a 3 by 1 vector uh, I'm trying to see if we got this correct so this is a 3 by 3 vector so this is all 3 by 3 so I'm trying to see if this is correct I think this should be a z transpose so this is 3 by 3 so this is uh, 1 by 3 times 3 by 3 so this is fine 1 by 3 this is 3 by 3 so this is 3 by 1 so this will be a uh, so implies tau belongs to R 3 by 1 and that should be fine I think this is correct this should be Z transpose yeah I think this is fine yeah so my update law will be uh, P hat dot will be equal to the gamma matrix times the tau gamma is just a, a symmetric positive definite matrix so uh, gamma can be anything in this case right so uh, any so any gamma is okay because if you remember the gamma actually came from this expression and here because del b a del p is zero any gamma would be completely okay here all right so this is what would be your update law uh, and of course this is not a p uh, i'll have to replace the p by the hats again 
correct i'll have to replace the p by the hats because of course they are unknown right so this is what you have uh this is essentially what you have you you know have this kind of an expression and all the all the taus get replaced by the hat variables and and that's of course uh coming from this yeah you can see that there is a hat quantity here hat quantity here right so so the tau is essentially coming from this guy absolutely right because the va contains only the hat quantities here and therefore the tau will also contain only the hat quantities because you replace the thetas by the theta hats here so i will actually mark it here so when you do this x theta hat therefore you are correct this is absolutely right yeah so you can see that well the interesting thing is that if you look at the control law here and you try to compare with you know say unmatched case control law and all that here um, this is the control law that you get in the you know uh, i mean actually let's try to compare it with the extended matching case right so this is the extended matching case where the control law is something like this in fact looks rather simple and our control law looks uh, rather complicated yeah in fact it has quadratic terms in p hat yeah rather complicated controller and uh, you also see the adaptation law uh, which also looks relatively simpler maybe uh, and our adaptation law looks like this with some gamma tau where tau is this guy with the hat terms again looks complicated right i mean slightly more complicated of course uh, in this case the adaptation law did not contain the p hats on the right here we do have the p hats on the right also but the cool thing is the control law does not contain any p hat dots whereas the control law does contain p hat dots and there is only one update law right there is only one update law one parameter estimate per parameter all right so this is the idea okay so yes the outcome looks rather complicated in fact i was also baffled because i saw some quadratics uh, but that is not a problem yeah we are obtaining a feedback law and an update law which is a divide of p hat dots and of course divide of over parameterization all right so i hope that this example helped you to understand how to apply the tuning function method please do not get worried like we did get worried and that's good so we understand how we can get worried because of uh, we because we start seeing some quadratics uh, but the idea is that everything is nice no problem uh, because of how the derivations go so you start to see p hats appearing in the update laws also and quadratics in p hat appearing in the uh, you know feedback law but this is not a problem we can we can we have already proved uh, asymptotic adaptive asymptotic stability uh, with the tuning functions all right so i really hope that you got an idea and also we didn't really get uh, any serious issues because of the vector control as opposed to the scalar control that we considered in our theory all right great so this is where we end our week 9 so i really hope that you've learned uh, a decent bit about uh, adaptive control tuning functions and integrator backstepping and so on uh, we will continue with more interesting material in the next week thank you